minus one minute. <laughs> Ten, nine. Uh, we eight. are recording. Yes. Oh, didn't we learn that uh, the uh, Siri cannot do a countdown while it's already doing a timer? Uh, it's Alexa. It was Alexa. Alexa. It can't do a countdown at all. Uh, <laughs> this is what we found on the web so for this you. Is, this is what we do. <laughs> what countdowns are. We found that all, all this stuff is if, going on. You so. could probably say timer. To uh, a 10 second timer. Well, yeah, you can do timers, but I needed it. I needed to count down 10, seven. 9, 8. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so we are recording. Officially 1 o'clock. We're going on. It is 1 o'clock. Uh, this is Jerry Deer and Julie Barth, Hello. and we are doing um, a live stream version of our podcast today for the old nerd in the gym. And if you're not seeing this live, then you're probably watching it after the fact. We will post the video. Is it live or Memorex? It's not Memorex. They don't do that anymore. Are they out of business? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's tape for sure. Does Memorex exist? Memorex, do, Memorex it, still does exist. They're yes. buried next to Kodak. So uh, like. Right. So we're here to talk about the cor- uh, coronavirus, the COVID-19 strain of the coronavirus and what it means to caregivers. And we decided to do this as a live stream as well as a podcast. So we're going to have all of this available on our website afterward. Um, This video will be available on the Facebook page, but it's also, uh, there's an article already posted on oldnerdinthegym.com and we will have, this podcast will be posted up. We'll have it edited out and ready to go today. So um, it's not going to be one of those. Apparently, it's going to be edited out and ready to go today. It's going to be today. Thank it's, you for letting me know that. Well, it doesn't need a lot of height. I mean, we <laughs> need to put the bumpers and stuff on. But uh, this is important. We wanted to get it out You know soon. that regular people don't know what bumpers are. They, well, it's the front and the back, the titles, uh, like <laughs> a movie has. Um, so we're talking today about the, the coronavirus and what that has to do with caregiving. And I think it's affected an awful lot of people. It has here. How to keep yourself and people you're taking care of safe Yes, as much as possible. And it starts with, it starts with keeping yourself safe. So one of those things that you have to keep in mind, we're, we're going to be all over the place with this. So, um, if you have questions, throw your questions out there, if we don't get to them, Oh, um, if I bring my phone up, I can see. If you can see the questions, right? Do that. Um, so she's going to do that and keep an eye on it, and then we're going to uh, be able to just go through this stuff and talk a little bit about uh, how it affects you. We've got some resources to throw at you. There are already some on our website, and always go to the CDC for your primary information. Remember that they are the official. Um, piece of information not only just from the government and and keep in mind whatever your politics is the cdc is an independent agency so it is pulling up scientific information it's not throwing political nonsense out there it's trying to help you to maintain your safety and security Um, we are here in ohio in case you don't know that and uh, last night some heavy stuff came down from governor dewine which was uh closing the um the restaurants at nine o'clock last night indefinitely except for carryouts and deliveries. Well, if we want rewind a little bit Friday, go thir- ahead. Yeah. Thursday afternoon, they closed the schools in Ohio. If you're not in Ohio, you might not know that. Um, a lot of other schools, uh, New York did it today, I think, or late last night. Either yeah. Way, that's well, happening. They gave us till Monday, but most of the schools in the area closed on Friday. So well, why'd you, why would you go one day on Monday? Yeah, I think that's silly. So that um, didn't really make sense. So they're effectively now we're we're freaking out about that, but f- treat this like a snowstorm. I mean, that's basically what I'm telling well, people. Well, that explains the shopping habits. Of it, it it is a little bit. I mean, we are responding to this the way I grew up at a time when we had the 1978 blizzard. I had to contend with um, a lot of things happened during that time, and there was a lot of people. Uh, there, there were many people who were freaking out about all that. And even today, we still have that. You get a little bit of snow, everybody goes and buys up all the milk and the toilet paper in the store. Well, this is it's worse. a little bit worse than that, yeah. This is a little sure. worse because you have the potential to get very, very sick. And I realize, and I want to address the media for just a minute because I do work in the media. We both do. And I work on television on occasion, and I will be doing a piece on this on TV this week <laughs> as the guest expert. Just but, as a note. It yes. Says me watching me watching us. It is a little weird. She's little watching little us. Creepy. Um so there are <laughs> there are interesting ways to understand how all this is working and and we'll be talking about that a little bit, but don't get too scared. Be thoughtful, be prepared. Um but don't freak out. Don't go. Yeah. Don't go buy all the toilet paper. Well, I a mean, a lot of it is just common sense. Anything it is. Anything that you it, would do during a, a bad flu season. Just do, do that. Do that three times and as much. We're going to talk about that. But I, I think my my primary concern is that people are watching, you know, all these stories. And we had this happen this week. Um, I had to send you for toilet paper. 
I went on Thursday <laughs> before the chaos ensued. So and we got... We were able to find some. We're okay. But, um, you know, I have my father at home. He is... I, I'm watching him on a monitor right now because he's in a separate part of my property. So I'm, I'm watching him on a monitor. He's asleep. Um, and even he at 87 years old, he's scared of this thing. He's fully aware. He's not... He doesn't have any dementia or anything. So he's asking me questions about this. And I need to point out, we are not medical experts by any stretch. We're not medical experts, not legal we're experts. Just regular Joes. We are regular people. You what other smarter people have told Yeah, us. we're trying to help you interpret this and and to specifically for our caregivers and for the people out there who are just trying to stay healthy during this thing. Yeah. So if we have any research, we'll post all that with uh, this at the bottom of the videos and everything. I will put where we got our information. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put all these links up for you, so you'll have what I'm looking at right now on these monitors in front of me. If you can tell, I don't know how well you can see this, but there are two screens in front of me. Both of them are full of links that I have up, and I'm gonna be pulling things from that. And I'd like to start with our own article, um, the piece I wrote yesterday and put out on the old nerd in the gym uh, website has more to do with just staying healthy during this thing. Um, it's called uh, Coronavirus and the Old Nerd, and it discusses essentially problems you're having to deal with, like pr protecting yourself, mm -hmm. reducing your risk. Um, and this is any viral respiratory infection. This isn't just coronavirus. If you do this stuff, if everybody did this stuff, the flu wouldn't be such a problem. Yeah, if these everyday precautions were something <laughs> that people did regularly, maybe that's something this will teach us. I hope so. To keep up with our everyday precautions on a better basis. Because um, you don't know how many times I've been in public and watched people leave a bathroom without washing their hands. Oh, the guys are worse. The guys, the guys are, are worse, worse, I promise you. Uh, guys, gross. if you're touching that urinal handle... Sorry, dudes. You're touching Imagine this. Imagine how many other you're people touching have the last guy's. Um, you know what? So <laughs> you need to think about that. I don't think people pay attention to that part. No, it's a right hand, left hand. It thing. doesn't matter. You know? I'm telling you, they're gonna do it with it's both not hands. Like a clean hand, dirty. Hand. I don't think like so. When you dip chicken and oh, is that how it is? Hand, a dry hand, and a wet. No, hand. I don't think it works okay. like that. Well, so, I wouldn't know. So, so something I want to I want to point out as we're doing this sort of little summary before we get into some of the specifics here is um, Broadview org it has a lot of information on um, spirituality, spirituality justice all sorts of things but they have a really great article that came out just this week um, about coronavirus comments uh, expose a lot of ageism it exposes things like mm -hmm. when you say something like and I'm going to read this verbatim uh, saying quote only end quote the elderly ill or disabled will die of COVID-19 devalues their lives and that's absolutely true it isn't just they who are going to die from this. It is they who are the most susceptible to this. And it's because of physiology. This isn't about ageism at that point. Now you're talking about the potential for them to get sick. No, it's just a matter of sick. the fact that their immune system is probably a little more compromised. That's right. And if you have an Im immune deficiency, something like that, we have HIV people, we have people with autoimmune uh, disorders, all this kind of stuff can cause a real problem. Yeah, and a lot of people who have chronic disorders like lupus and such, that comes with a, a certain aspect of having a, an immune suppression. Right. So um, let's let's dial this back now. We're going to talk a little bit about, I, I just want to mention uh, some of the things that you can do to reduce your risk first. This is your risk. And I, and I need to point out that you have to leave the house sometimes. If you're mm -hmm. taking care of a family member. You've got to pick up prescriptions. you gotta, you got to go groceries. to the store. You, yeah, you got to do all this. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I'm, I hope people who are not caregivers may see this and, and realize, uh, or even somebody who doesn't have an elderly person or well, even a, if you just have an ill person. Even if you don't have kids, keep in mind that people need those supplies. Don't hoard this stuff because this is not a disaster. It's gonna we're gonna recover from this. It's gonna take a little time. Well, if you think about it, somebody probably you don't need seven things of toilet paper. You really don't, but Six somebody other might need one of those. Yes, could use that. So and imagine imagine how this them is in coming your garage, down. Just taking it away from other people. Right, and if you are one of those, if you're a prepper or something. God love you, because you got it yeah, right. You we were love all those crazy. Extreme couponers now we that I used nutty. to hate when I worked in retail. <laughs> we were stupid. They are the smart ones, maybe. Uh, but they're, you know they're what? Selling hand sanitizer for twenty dollars a gallon. The seventy-five. No matter how much toilet paper you buy, it's not going to protect you from this bug. So let's mm -hmm. talk about what will. So reducing your risk will reduce your your family member your your charges risk. Maybe I can guess what they are because I have. You want to try to guess? I have what they some are? in front of me, and you have some in front. Oh, of Oh, we've got a whole bunch then. So let's, you do you, one, and no, I'll you do one? some. Okay. I'll. Uh, I'll cross them off as see. I go. Avoid touching your face, nose, and hands. Excellent. Yeah. Face, nose, and eyes. I don't know. Don't Specifically with, too. and I should with your hands. With <laughs> unwashed hands. Yes. If you just washed your hands, you're fine. But 
yeah, don't touch your eyes or your nose or your mouth. Uh, wash your hands often with soap and water at least 20 seconds. People say, say happy birthday. Any song is fine Sing as long happy as it's 20 birthday. seconds. ABCs yeah. is about 20 seconds. ABCs, too. Gilligan's Island, we'll give you a full minute. There you go. That's cool. Um, any of that stuff. Whatever you can do, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, something that lets you remind yourself. Keep in mind that it's friction that cleans your hands, not soap itself. Yeah, so it's just this. rinsing it. Put Rinse. the soap, really rub it in. Scrubbies. So Scrubby if you here's what I would su- suggest you do. If you really want to see how to wash your hands, go wash and watch an episode of MASH. The surgeons? The surgeons were taught, the Up surgeon actors elbows. were taught how to wash their hands by actual surgeons on the show. So you will be able to see them using yes. not only scrubbing with brushes and everything, mm-hmm. but they use a nail brush. Yes. Don't forget the nail brush on washing your hands because the the, the amount of crap that's so under your nails. Are think nail about. brushes on the line with toilet paper where you can't get one? I certainly hope not. I um, have one. Right. I, they're very ex- they're like a buck, and they're they a lot often. In, they're often in the travel area. Or with the nail polish. Yep, you can find those. It doesn't have any to... dollar store may or may not have them, but I know that a lot of them carry them. And any scrub brush will work. Yeah. Anything with a fine teeth or you fine bristles. You want something bristles. with a little bit of a stiff bristle. Stiffness to yeah. it. Yes. Um, you got another one. Keep I going. I have. Clean and disinfect your home on a regular basis, especially frequently touched surfaces such as tables, doorknobs, light switches, toilets, sinks. So s- we are not going to be. We are not going to be that obsessive about this. We're just not because we're not wired that way. If you're scared of it already, you probably are this way a little bit. But or door- if you're already OCD and you do that, do- anyway. doorknobs are the biggest one. You don't ge- have to do it six times. And just guess once. what? You want to see? I don't have one here because I can't pick it up, but. You're watching us on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. The I saw a recent thing where they went in and they did uh, swab studies on cell phones are gross. in bathrooms. The cell phone was dirtier than the toilet in a men's room at an well, airport. Think about it. Your hand touches your cell phone what 50, 60 times a day. Oh, probably. And what more. is your hand? You're touched? carrying it around, right? So my phone says I use it about three hours a day, according to my screen. It's probably more than that my, for most people. Well, my screen. Summary tells me. Yeah. So what I'm going to recommend is clean Clean that phone. phone. Take the case off. Clean it up really well. Make sure you do whatever you need to do for it. They had some kind of ultraviolet sanitizer. I don't think that's necessary. Forget it. Don't do the ultraviolet stuff because Lysol wipe it down. And keep in mind, ultraviolet is designed to kill bacteria, not viruses. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true for sure, but why test it? I mean, go look it up. Maybe there's something I'm not aware of, but I I don't know how well that stuff works. The only way you can be certain is with an actual disinfecting cleanser of some kind. Go ahead. Oh, you, that was mine. Oh, that was yours. Um, volley to you. If you feel like you're sick, stay away from people. Yes. That's when you wear the mask. Mm -hmm. You don't need masks. If you're not sick, it won't help you. Yeah, it's to keep you if you accidentally cough or sneeze or something and it doesn't doesn't go anywhere. That's the idea. And throw that mask away if you do that. Don't keep it. Mm-hmm. Um, masks don't help you that much. The best thing to do is just stay clear of everybody. Now, as a yes. caregiver, I have to put a, care, a caveat on that. Well, you have to get close to your. What doctor. do you What do you do if you are sick or you're showing symptoms and you are a caregiver? Because if you have an elderly parent well, it or depends patient on like whether I have, you have another option. Exactly. So here's what has to happen. I've hear, I'm hearing this from all over the place different ways. Um, wash constantly and use gloves if you have to touch the patient's things or their personal. And, and you know, if you're moving their things around, you're getting them mm-hmm. food, you're doing whatever, that's when you want to cover your mouth, cover your hands, wash repeatedly. You, you're not going to feel like helping them. Mm-hmm. This is going to be even harder. Is you're just going to be sick. Well, and try to stay as away from them as much as you can. Just yeah, you just limit get, how much contact. You try to have. ask for help. Come up with a contingency before somebody gets sick. I'm right. trying if to do that now. If you have a second now. string to call in, that would be great. Some people are not going to have that. We option. don't have that a lot around here, so it's going to be get rough. yourself a beekeeper outfit. Well, the beekeeper Keep outfit track. won't help you. You have to have a hazmat outfit, fully Beekeeper's sealed. Not. No, beekeepers outfits are not sealed from bacteria and and viruses. Well, that's just a screen. <laughs> it's just a bug that can't get in. Go uh, ahead. You got another one over there. Uh, avoid any non-essential travel and being in public places. We already kind of said that. Yeah. If you don't have to go out. Maybe you can get the prescriptions delivered. Maybe wipe them down at the front door when they get here. But uh, avoid packages. 
come into your house? Yes, you we got a package. I was just telling Julie before we started, we got a package yesterday and wiped it down before we handled it with our bare hands and then washed after we did that. Once and it was out of its took, container. The box only stayed in the house, what, 30 seconds? Oh, if that long. And it was on a tile floor where it could be wiped up really easily and didn't make it to the kitchen, and didn't get around our, everything our patient. Everything was disinfected and then washed yeah. hands. And um, be sure you cover your mouth and nose with a tissue or something you can throw away when you sneeze or cough. Um, yeah, unfortunately, hankies are not exactly sanitary. No, and I'm a handkerchief person, so I've had to... You are old school like I'm that. I'm very old school like that, so I've had to kind of change my ways of doing that. But now you run into the problem of they don't have any tissues at the store. Right. So well, you're, if you're going to be a handkerchief person, be a seven handkerchief person Yeah, every day. change it every time you have a problem. Um, but if you do that, throw the tissue away, wash your hands really well, make sure you're clean after you do that. because Now, I'm seeing on TV people are doing this. Well, in, then your into arm's the sleeve. Touch things. Well, it is better than nothing. Yeah. So what I was going to say was, if you don't have it, don't do it in your hands. Do it in your elbow, right. like in well, your you clothes. Can change your shirt. If you, you can change your shirt if you have to, and and it's not going to. There's a thing about surfaces. You don't usually rub your arm up against people. No, not general. Well, now you're doing the elbow bump. You know, you're not supposed to shake hands anymore. We've been told, but well, I prefer I'm not this going one. Outside at all. So. Do this. Do the Vulcan greeting from Star I'm Trek. I'm gonna do the. I'm deaf and I'm clapping at something. Then I Yay, across the room. Hi, nice to see okay. you. Okay, how you doing? Yeah. That's okay too. That's I've got across it. the room. You're gonna be safe. Uh-huh. Um, I, that's all I have on this well, list. Live long and prosper is actually a pretty good. It advice is right now. It's a nice thing to say <laughs> too, because you really got to do it. Um, go ahead. What else have you got? That's all I have on this side. This, this is a lot uh, of not wa- wash your hands after touching surfaces in public places. Oh, especially public places. Mm-hmm. Um, here's another one: six feet of somebody. Yes. Stay with it away from, at least six feet. We're I, finding out that that's not no, enough. I heard out this morning that they're limiting the amount of seats they're selling in the movie theater so people so, can right, sit every six other feet row. Apart. Yep. So they're not in the. I'm in surprised the same they're row. not closed yet. Uh, that may the come. Library's closed. That may come. Well, think about Schools what a library is, though. Everybody touches the. Everybody's place. touching everything. You're That's you're sharing true. all the stuff. And so. there's a bunch of little toddlers running around playing. Little with kids. Legos, putting them yeah. in their mouth. You got uh, daycares have issues. Thank you, Amazon, for having downloadable books. Otherwise, three <laughs> we weeks really at home with my kid. Uh, oh that's going to be fun. Thank you, um, YouTube, for existing. The the sneezes, uh, respiratory droplets, is where mm. co- uh, coronavirus is transmitted. So it's the breathing and everything, and it can be on surfaces. But I, I read yeah. this morning, and again, this is unqualified. This I can't remember who who put this out. I think it was CBS News, but it was something to do with we're we're making too big of a deal out of the surfaces, right? Because it doesn't stay on there long well, enough. They keep changing their mind. They it's really do. So like, my are eggs good for you every other week? Every, it's it's like, different. I think they really don't know. Yeah. I think they're guessing in order to be on the safe side. And I, I also have to, a tendency to agree with being a little bit over the top well, on this. Err on the side of caution at this yeah. point, I would say, is good. People are stupid in a group. So what would you say about all these kids are out of school? What if they want to go to each other's house to play? Absolutely not. No. No. They what got if, video games. They got the s- internet. What if they're all healthy? How long are they going to be? You don't know where the kids been and you Mm -hmm. don't know where their parents have been. You don't know where their stuff has been. You you can't take that chance. Uh, My kids, Beth, one of his best friends, his mom works at McDonald's. Imagine how many people she comes into contact with. Well, that's no different than any place else. And I I think we, we have a, it's food related. You definitely want to be careful (laughs) about that. But I, again, this is a a viral respiratory infection. It is not something that you can get just from touching the other person. There has to be stuff there. Right. But why would you take that chance? You know, it's uh, this is a lot of problems here. So maybe we should go through the symptoms of coronavirus. Do you have those? Here. Yes. I don't have those. Uh, potential symptoms include fever, cough, shortness of breath, persistent pain or pressure in your chest. Sure sounds like the flu to me. Except there are differences. What are the differences? Well, that's a different piece of paper I don't have in front of me. Just well, yet. CDC, uh, the <laughs> one thing I that tell I, you in a minute. I did post a, a repost a thing on the old nerd uh, Facebook page th- yes. that was a graphic that the CDC put out that shows that the primary thing that makes you sure that you don't have this is if you're sneezing. Yes. There's no sneezes. So apparently sneezing is not associated with this. Sneezing I don't really is a understand good thing that. Right but now. yeah. So if you're doing that, um, I, go, go ahead. ahead. I looked at a map the other day, which was interesting because. It had uh, how many cases in each country? That map is changing by the minute. Yes. This was from the 12th, and I have since seen a map that's closer to that. And they are changing at a rapid rate. But I think that also has to do with testing. 
Um, I am looking at, I, I will post this link, but johnahartford.org, the John Hartford Foundation. Um, one of the articles uh, that they have posted here is uh, resources for older adults, family caregivers, and healthcare providers. I think this is a really good one. Mm-hmm. It's probably my favorite one I've read on, on here so far. Um, it has things for prevention. It has who's more at risk. I think we know who's at risk. It's the same people who are at risk for lots of other respiratory illnesses. I well, don't think that's going to change. with a compromised immune system. Con- and we've, we've been over that, right. So now the, the thing I will add to that is that understanding what this bug is and why people are freaking out, um, you have to go back to the Spanish flu in the early 1900s, um, probably around 1917, 1920. I forget exactly. I don't have it in front of me. The, the Spanish flu spread wi- like wildfire, and there was one city that did not cancel. It was about the same time of year, too, and one city did not cancel their St. Patrick's Day mm-hmm. event, and it th- it spread crazily. Yes. It just went bananas. And, and that's interesting because it's St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. It's St. Patrick's Day. That some places have not canceled their event. That's nuts. That's uh, if you're going to get into a crowd like that, you're asking for this. And yeah. There's, I don't care, and I'm going to say this very. I'm not someone who would go out for St. Patrick's Day anyway, but I'm going to say this very not worth it. No, and I'm going to say this very directly, and I don't care if people don't like me. If that's what your focus is, that you need to go get drunk because it's St. Patrick's Day, and you don't care about what's going on, you deserve what happens to you. But the problem Gosh. is, you're going to give it to somebody else. Yeah, your kids. Are I'm worried about your and- kids and your grandparents and your whoever because you're too dumb to stay in away from these things. And if people don't like me for saying that, that's too bad. I do agree the government's gone kind of nutty on this a little bit, but they have to. Because what are you going to say to them when they don't go nutty Right. and this thing turns into a bigger problem? Everybody freaks out all of a sudden. And then yeah. Nobody wants to be They want the, somebody to blame. I'm, I'm always going to blame Trump for everything because I don't like him, and I, <laughs> I don't have a problem saying that. But at the same time, I'm not listening to Trump. I'm listening to – and I wouldn't listen to whoever the president was at the time. I'm listening to the experts – the CDC, the doctors, and and the people who are talking about this, those are the ones. I don't want to hear from the news people. I want them to tell me where to find my resources, which is what we're doing here for you. We are not experts. Yes. We're helping you find these resources. I was so. listening to our local NPR station yesterday, and I found out that the former head of oh, Surgeon General, the former Surgeon General was going around to hospitals, including the ones in the most affected areas in California and Washington, to see how prepared they are. And they were saying um, all of the things that we've been saying to try to limit the hospitals being inundated with people who aren't. If you're not sick, don't go to the hospital. Yes, I am planning (laughs) to uh, reschedule a doctor's appointment for blood work next week (laughs) because it doesn't matter. It's not that important. Well, yeah, if you're not sick, don't go. I think that's a huge thing. If you're not ill. My doctor's office happens to be in a hospital. And if you're not ill, please don't go to the emergency room. We have where I live here. There's a very small ER, and it's a real ER. It's it's got a, a CAT scan machine. Uh, you know, it's it's set up by one of the local health healthcare giants, but it's a rural ER. It is designed. I think there's 15 or 18 rooms, but they don't have 15 or 18 doctors. No. And I can see them probably being busier right now. I don't know if that's true. It'd that be was interesting one other to find thing out. That they mentioned was if the doctors are taking precautions because they can't get tested to find out if they're at risk because there aren't enough tests, then they don't know if they're, you know, they need to be, if they need to be sequestered, then we have less healthcare professionals to deal with the same amount of patients or more. I think people forget that doctors are first responders Yeah. and nurses. And I think nurses get this more than doctors because the doctor's with I you for 12 seconds. I can only imagine being an EMT right now, having to go into people's houses. I would, well, and that brings me to another subject. So is any other things on those lines? Let's, let's move on to the next thing here. So the next thing yeah, is I'm about good. home care. So as, as a caregiver, we're talking again to a lot of caregivers, and as a, as a caregiver, your likelihood of running into people who have to come into the house to care for your patient mm-hmm. uh, is very high. I had, for the last few weeks, we've had um, therapists mm-hmm. coming in for dad. And this week, I mean, every day we have a home care person for a couple of hours who comes in and helps with lunch and cleaning and all that sort of stuff, and, and we greatly need her mm-hmm. her help. But the problem is that, I don't know where else she has been today. I don't know if she has taken those precautions. And now I should say this. She and I have talked about this, and she is doing all the stuff that you should do. But right. there are people who may not. Right. And, and Or you just don't remember. You, well, you, you or know, if it's, it's just DoorDash, and you don't have a, a 
you know, you don't know where that person's been. Like, you well, said. here's the other, yeah. And along with that are people that come into your house that, that y- your plumbing breaks down. You have to have a plumber in your house. Right. You don't know where he's been. I mean, what you about c- even just the mailman, you're not interacting with them, but they've touched all your stuff. This all sounds ridiculous when you it's put it on paper. A little crazy. It, it yeah, feels, know, it feels scary. And I, I had a weird, I, I'm going to talk about this for a minute because I think healthcare is you have a weird dream. about talking about your dreams. I had a weird dream <laughs> very that this was very much a Twilight Zone episode. It does feel like And one, it was the it? one where the people, I don't know if, if you've ever seen the Twilight Zone, there was an old episode where they the people are running around, this guy's going, where'd everybody go? And they're trying, they used it in an Arby's commercial. Arby's roast beef sale, I remember yeah. that. So they, it, this is a, it's like the I think they redid it in the movie too. Kind of like an Alfred Hitchcock, the birds. Very much an Alfred Hitchcock crazy. kind of thing. And, it, and I woke up thinking like, and there was a an issue with it I was thinking about how the government feels like uh, a nationalist government right now. Mm-hmm. We're going to militarize. Like we're going to military law. We're going to do whatever. A little bit communist around here. Well, less communist, more Nazi. <laughs> you know, and but this is, uh, and people are freaking out. This is what socialism is like. Well, if socialism know. is going to keep us alive, right? It's not I'm that okay. big a deal. I and and I socialism is supposed to be everybody for the greater good. Now I so say that's that not bad in theory. I it's not bad in theory. In practice, it has some issues. But and one of those issues is okay. We've closed all the restaurants, but there are so many people who work for those restaurants who are on very limited incomes, mm-hmm. and often depend on their tips. Yeah, and they're not going to make money right yeah, now. Yeah, and they're talking about. Loans for small businesses, not loans for people who have small. Bank who have to work who there. Who have small bank accounts. Well, and the idea is that the small business will be able to continue to pay some people and and keep it going. So I'm hoping that that will be a better issue. Oh, you know the marker. Um, this is how she tells me how much time we have, um, th- and and I'm hoping that will be a, a less of a problem. But continuing our discussion about older family members and and having people come into your home, um, you have to do this with family as well. Yes. You need to let your family members know, hey, this is a risk. I don't know where you've been. Uh, my sister's been sick the last few days. She usually comes to see my dad on the weekends, and she's had some kind of an inner ear infection, and, and we just can't. We she's just, frequently ill. She's frequently ill with this stuff. And, and this she's is around large groups of people. Large groups of people, sense. church, all that stuff. And she has self-quarantined from seeing him, which is good. She called and talked to him today. His sister, his sister, my father's sister is very much the same way. She has trouble getting a ride, but she's been sick too. Mm -hmm. So we have all of these things that come into play here. Um, We have to be careful that, that the the boy doesn't bring something home. Well, in my own family alone, I have a transplant patient, someone with an autoimmune disease, (laughs) People over seven, two people over 70. So we're all screwed is what's Teachers going on. Teachers <laughs> who are being, two college professors who are around a bunch of people at one well, time. At least that's easy. I'm college is a little bit easier because you're not right up against them. That's true. You, you know, know, you, you got some distance. you don't have to distance. wipe their noses like no, a No, you don't have teacher. to. You're not a, a daycare teacher or something. So I do have the new numbers for how many cases in oh, let's have state it. if you're interested. Let's have it. Ohio is still currently at one to five cases as of March 14th, but that was two days ago. I heard there were 36 so confirmed cases. So this is cases. two days ago. Huh. Situation 17. They didn't update it. I don't think that's updated. We should probably it's check that out. It, you know what? And it doesn't matter. If there's one case that's anywhere near you, the potential of you getting it is a lot higher. So let's and just... why not take precautions? When the casinos close in Vegas, this is a serious problem. Well, what is it? Vegas and Disney World and they, Disneyland? They, Disney, and they only... The last Disney's, time they closed was the Kennedy assassination uh-huh. and 9-11. And, and that's... Look what it took. Yeah. You had to kill off the president and 3,000 people in order for Disney to shut down. And that's... I'm not saying that tongue-in-cheek. That's a big deal. This says, as of CNN 57 minutes ago, 6,500 deaths worldwide. There you go. That's worldwide. That's worth, you know, 6,500 out of... 400,000? Well, 6 million people on there. Six million, well, I mean 400,000 that have... I don't know what the numbers are. Let's not speculate. I don't want to be the guys on the news. No, there's 6 billion people on Earth. I don't, I don't know. Um, That's a, not a guess. So here's the other thing to consider when you're doing things at home uh, and taking care of the family member. Um, this Limit your exposure. Do all that stuff. But you know the other thing we have to contend with is not just protecting yourself. Um the Washington State Department of Health has some stuff, and we posted that on the Facebook, or I'm sorry, on the website already. It's available. But here are some things we need to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, isolation and monotony are going to be a problem. So now schools are closed. Well, but the thing is, you have to keep <laughs> in mind that when you're having Netflix and all these technological ways of, of maintaining you know, your sanity, but there are some things that you 
I'm starting to feel a little stir crazy after several months of adjusting to dad living with me. Right. So think about that. And now think about the things that I did outside of the home that helped me with that are now closed. Yes. Yoga. I don't want to yoga classes, my workouts, okay. swimming, all this, the gym is closed and I don't want to go to a movie theater now. That scares mm-hmm. the crap out of me. I, I just, I don't want to have, be in those situations because I can't take the risk. So and it's still winter, so you can't do things it's outside. It's still winter. It's hard. Now, it's up today. It's going to be in the 50s here in Ohio, but I don't know where it's everywhere else. You potentially take a bike ride. If you're in a it better. It doesn't associate with those people. If you're a better client. And, and you know, I, I'm going to encourage that. We're going to get to that in a minute. So okay. one of the things is food. Let's mm-hmm. start with how to deal with some of this stuff. Well, I, I also had some stuff from the CDC.gov that said try to figure out a way to get food delivered to you so you don't have to go to the grocery store. Okay. Stay uh, out of social, family, or commercial networks. Maybe have some a friend bring some groceries to you if you're at risk. So how, what is to keep, and I'm going to throw the wet blanket on this, what is to keep the friend from having the problem? Well... <laughs> See, but if there's they're no, not at risk, it's better they go to my than an eighty than year old. Then you going, going and taking and, your charge yes. with you, your child who's who's ill or whatever. Right. Um the other thing about food is you have to be careful when you're isolated, don't overeat. Mm-hmm. Ignoring the potential for supply be... shortages. Okay, mm-hmm. take that out. If only to avoid the infection risk at the store, boredom is going to invite snacking and potential overeating. This is true. You have to be careful about that. When you do shop and you get a chance to shop, avoid buying those those unhealthy snacks. Try to get fresh fruit. Veg- I will veg- tell vegetables. you what, the fresh fruit and vegetables was pretty hard to find. I went They're to getting the grocery picked store over. yesterday. There was an area bag of salad to be found. So I was told by a, a Walmart employee that directly, want firsthand, that Walmart gets a truck. Every Walmart gets a truck every, every day. Two- yeah, every day. Every day. A lot of them are two or three times a week. Now, if so, this yeah. has, well, it depends on what it is. Yes. So the basic stuff is delivered every day. Things they go through a lot. Milk, what about the all fresh that stuff. produce? The fresh produce is part of that, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Now, this could change. I don't know Walmarts, uh, if it's the same across the board, but these Walmarts that this this person was telling me about are, are part of that. But you've got to stay on top of it. Mm-hmm. Try your mom and pop stores. Yes. The local stores have stuff that the other ones don't. Some of the smaller grocery chains. Yes. They are still out of some of the staples. You're not going to find hand sanitizer. You're going to be low on toilet paper, all that stuff Mm -hmm. still. But again, take what you need. But citrus fruits and other fruit will help you shore up your immune immune system. Mm -hmm. Um, Provide them to your family member as well if they're stable enough to eat it. Is there anything about uh, like echinacea, vitamin C? You know what? Those things, uh, those are anecdotal as it is. I don't want to push any kind of supplements because I don't think, honestly, my personal opinion, having a background in biology and the healthcare work that I've done, mm-hmm. I've not seen a lot of difference in them. I think it's never a bad thing to shore up your your vitamin, right. you know, efficiency. But you should be taking a multivitamin anyway. A, a, a daily multivitamin is probably the best you can do because anything beyond that, all you're getting is expensive pee. I say that all the time because your body can only process so much. So if you start down and all this stuff, I, right. I, I'll never forget a friend of mine thought it was called um, euthanasia. <laughs> Echinacea? I'm taking some euthanasia today. I'm like, no, Ooh, I hope not. You, you really know? don't want to do that. But it's not gonna. It's not gonna stop this. You can handfuls of vitamins all you want, right. and all these weird food supplements, the 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 network marketing supplements, all that stuff. It's not gonna stop it. You yeah. need to eat real food, and you need to do it properly. Um, the other thing is hydration. Yes. Drink the water, people. You've probably seen. We've got our old nerd jug. Water here. is safe. Water is safe. If you dip, if you get water. bottled water, you're probably not running out of it. It's probably there. Get or a filter get for a your tap. Whatever you bad. can do, right? Um, but we have a lot of old nerd part articles and podcasts about water. Staying hydrated is vital. And if you stay hydrated, that's how your body processes this stuff. When you get Since bugs. Since you have all this extra free time, you can go listen to the water podcast. You can go listen to all the podcasts, yeah. <laughs> um, I expect to see our numbers jump up this week with everybody listening to me. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go, I'm going to do this a little backwards. The next thing is sleep. Mm-hmm. Because if you're a caregiver, you're not sleeping that well to start with. Yeah. That was pretty funny that you said sleep. Yeah. So I wanted to throw that in. I have not slept well. I'm an well. excellent sleeper. When you have no get, problem. When I finally get to sleep. You have no problem sleeping. I have trouble getting to sleep. And then I have problems getting her awake. Um, mm-hmm. But the the problem with, with being a caregiver is your sleep patterns are all over the place. You may have found a nice groove, and that's great. But if you're a caregiver of someone with Parkinson's or a disease that changes... It's going to be different, and my dad is changing, and I'm having to adjust, and he's having to adjust, and and now, throw the anxiety. As I mentioned, I'm having bad dreams about this stuff. It's it's dealing with it, and 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 now my my 87 year old father is going, 
What about, you know, and he's worried about it. And I'm wondering in about a year if there's going to be a whole bunch of dystopian novels about this. I already, I thought of a short story this morning I was going to write up. Um, I, I, th- I can think of at least three of our friends who would write some crazy stories about this. But, you know, things that can help you is, I'm going to say this, and, and this kind of an, an irony on this too, and it will go into this as well. You got to reduce your anxiety if you're going to sleep. Mm-hmm. So one of those things is getting proper rest, uh, is getting rid of the screens right before bed. Turn off the iPad, turn off the phone, do whatever you got to do for and like the those, hour. Use that warm setting for the evening. No, turn them off. Don't use them at all. Stay away from the screens. Get a book. Get a new, no, don't read a newspaper. I read on my device though. Get it, well, read a paper book because it, the idea, the color of light, even the stuff with the, the filters and everything will keep your brain ang- uh, amped, amped up. up. You don't want to be amped up. You want to try to calm down. So play a game with your charge before bed. Um, read a book. Don't read the newspaper. Don't do things like go to the, uh, go and look at social media. And really that's my next thing too. And I, I get the irony of talking about social media. Um, I can't see that. You don't have glasses. I don't have my glasses on. Hold on. Sorry guys. I'm (laughs) hang on. We're not used to, we're not going to edit this. So, So you get to see all this. Let's see what you got there. Uh, Oh, okay. Um, do you want to? I'm just keeping time. Are you getting any? Do you want to do our top of the hour, quarter of the hour? Uh... We will in just a moment. Yes. Um, I want to finish the social media thing. So it might seem like the social media is a great idea during your isolation, but the problem is that's where all the junk is. Um, and there's we, a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of misinformation, and really, it's just people complaining and whining and political and it's nonsense every day. <laughs> and it's going to be worse right now. It's going to be worse tomorrow because tomorrow's an election here in Ohio. There's primaries all over the country, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so none of this stuff, all this negativity, none of this is going to help you. So I'm going to suggest that you stay away from social media, except what those. What is it you called in in that article? You wrote an article about social media taking a break. Uh, yeah, disconnecting. Yeah. You just disconnect from social media. Go dark. Go go unplugged for a little bit. Um, that doesn't mean you don't check the resources that you care about, you know, like ours or the, you know, a news outlet that you really trust. Mm-hmm. Check those out. That's fine. But don't put it down. You know, don't be on there. If you look at your phone and it says like more than three hours a day or something that you're being inundated by this stuff, put your phone away. I mean, it's just I don't have any social media up right now. I know we're broadcasting. I have the only no idea. One I have up is our, our live broadcast. I have no idea how many people are watching us. I don't. I can't see any of that. I don't want to see that. But well, one. Well, that's enough. Um, <laughs> Thank but, you, one listener. Well, the, we'll be we'll be doing that. We'll be. We'll post this. Later. We're going to post the it later. Day. It is the middle of the day, and, and we if know everybody it. read your working remotely thing, they're busy working remotely. They really are busy working remotely. That's a whole nother <laughs> a whole nother topic. If you are working remotely and a caregiver, that's another discussion, and I'll I'll do a couple minutes of that at the end. But if you want to talk to family members or friends, pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. Talk to them directly. The voice will make you feel better. Or Skype if you want. No, to don't, no technology. Why not? Just pick up the phone and hear their voice. If you want to see them, you have to see them visually, then do the Skype thing. But it's just easier. You can sit every, anywhere. You can be comfortable. You can't be comfortable looking at a Skype screen. FaceTime maybe because you're holding the, the That's phone true. up. If you've got a FaceTime, that's cool. Skype, I guess, works on the phone, too. I've never used it that way, but I, I get that that's an option. The idea is to to try to stay as calm as you can, and if you've got that stuff up, if you've got a screen in front of you, you're going to be tempted to look at it. Mm-hmm. So try to stay away from that. And above all, you know, just kind of hang in there. This is... And don't let everybody freak you out. Check anything that you find on Facebook. Make sure you're looking that stuff up on a reputable source because, you know, the plumber down the street doesn't necessarily know... What's the best CDC numbers right. for this week? Ignore the politician posts. <laughs> look at the CDC. Yes. Um, the, your local health department and the CDT, CDC are your best resources. The, These uh, people are the professionals. They, they know, know what they're, they're talking, talking about. about. They're scared just like you are. They have families. They're going to give you right information. Uh, the American Healthcare Association has a coronavirus thing if you're WHO. a caregiver. WHO is a little too big. It's too broad. Um, you're going to want to have local stuff. Uh Leading Age, for example, the Centers for Disease Control, uh, they have a thing about Leading long-term. Leading Age Ohio has it on there? Uh, yeah, long-term care facilities are, are having issues too, and they're posting stuff on their own websites. So if you need information about your particular area, if you have someone in a nursing facility. Mm-hmm. Um, pharmacy, the American Pharmacists Association, I got calls and emails from our pharmacy already yeah. saying, we are up and running. Please 
call us before you come pick up your stuff because they're getting inundated mm-hmm. by stuff as well. Also, being that tomorrow is an election day, Ugh. make sure you take the coronavirus precautions for election day. If you would like to know what those are, I can tell you. According to the Columbus Dispatch. Let's have it. And Channel 4 NBC. For uh, now, I, be aware, this affects a very small number of people tomorrow. There are only 37 confirmed cases as of March 15th. But, you know, in these counties, make sure you give a little distance between each other. Try to go at a time when everyone's not so busy. Uh, avoid noon and first thing in the morning. Yes. And right after work. If you can go in those odd hours, you'll get in and get out pretty quickly. Or, and you know, remember, it go is a vote today if you can. Well, be aware. Well, if if your area has early voting and it's still available today, then go do that. But remember that most of these are primaries, and it's going to be really quick. There's not going to be a lot on the ballot, so They're it won't take you very long. Certain county boards to have curbside voting where you don't have to get out of your car. Um. So now let's let's move over to really quickly. Let's let's talk about how to prepare your house. Okay. A little bit. Okay. So if you have neighbors. Coordinate with your neighbors that if you're close to them, coordinate with what if someone gets sick? Can we send our kid to your house so they don't get sick? Can we get them tested first? They test negative. We're going to isolate them with an aunt or an uncle who's also, you know, who has not tested for the bug um, to make sure that they're not going to get sick. Um, create an emergency contact list. If there's a problem with your, your charge, if, you got, if you're a caregiver and you have someone and they get sick, I'm, I'm looking at my, my dad now on the monitor. It looks like he's still asleep. But what if he suddenly got ill? Mm-hmm. Um, now, the other thing, I'm gonna, it's not on this list, but if you are a caregiver and you don't have a life call type device for your, for your patient, mm-hmm. get one. It's very minimal cost. If you go through your local agency on aging, they can help you get it for almost nothing if not free. And that will give you an immediate option. If they get very ill, you can hit that button and you'll have resources right away. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, Choose a room in your house that can be designated as a sick room. If somebody gets sick, you need to to isolate somebody, uh, coordinate Coordinate. them off. I was going to say coordinate. Quarantine. Well, you got to coordinate it too. (laughs) Coordinate a quarantine. Coordinate a quarantine. Make sure there's (laughs) enough space and and, uh, access. Hashtag coordinate a quarantine. Um, If you only have (laughs) one bathroom in the house, clean it often. Like every time someone uses that bathroom, they should be required to like Clorox wipe the the toilet seat, mm-hmm. Clorox wipe the counters. Do that every time. If you're not sharing a bathroom and you have one to make a separate one and you have someone ill yeah. in the house, make sure no one else uses that. Washing bathroom. any cloths with hot water, bleach, putting your sponges in the dishwasher. Make sure things oh, are throw sanitized. this. No, I'm going to go a step further. Throw the sponges out. You can't sanitize them. Don't s- you can't sanitize a sponge anyway. It's really not possible. It's too porous. Really? Whatever you hear on TV, <sighs> the math nice. says. Think about that. It's these. And even well, I just a, figured it was a heat. Even a synthetic sponge mm-hmm. has all that stuff. You might be able to kill some stuff off, but are you going to get all the way into those pores? No. Be Believe very careful about that. Believe it or not, I've been that. to the sponge museum. There's but the, sponge, are those not live sponges? Those are natural sponges. Yeah, natural In sponges, Springs, not the same thing. <laughs> Even synthetic sponges will le- will hold so it less. You can't clean any sponges. I wouldn't take the chance. No. I'm sure someone's going to say, yes, you can. You can mm-hmm. do this stuff to it. But honestly, anybody in this situation, I yeah. would not keep those sponges. Get rid of them. Buy other ones. Because they're poofs, cheap. They're a buck. Bath you know? poofs are a dollar or two. So yes. Use a washcloth. Throw it in the bath. In the shower. Wash the washcloth. And then put it in the washing machine. Yep. Keep it in super hot water. Check your water heaters. Make sure that it, the temperature is high enough that it's because you can set the the temperature on your water heater. What is a good temperature for a water heater? I think they're typically one twenty five. Why don't you look that up? That that would That's be a, a really good one good to question. find out because there's there's got to be a resource. I was always told it was like one twenty five. I think mine is set for that. Um, but I I have a hard time getting my dad to wash his hands in hot water. He because he's his sensory uh, ability is different now so he perceives heat and cold according to this the recommended hot water heater setting is 120 for most people okay but you can set it's if it hasn't been adjusted it's most likely set to 140 which is the manufacturer they come at 140 right that much i knew i thought it was 125 i think 125 is probably that's reasonable safe it's a little bit higher than you know remember that boiling point of water is uh, 100 according to osha it says 140 
so there's apparently some discrepancy. Well, I'm going to say this outright. OSHA does some stuff that's dumb. So I wouldn't really. 120 is to reduce your <laughs> electricity consumption. So I would say 125 seems reasonable. 125 is probably okay. I'm pretty sure that's We're warm We're not HVAC set. people. But it's warm enough what my brother is, <laughs> and I've had to help him work on those things before, and I always remember we keep them at 125. So, right. That sounds reasonable. Um, so, again, it's about uh, electricity use and like that. We um, have an issue with hot water with your father being able to feel. Yeah, he can't really tell, but we have to be able to wash his hands in hot water. That's mm-hmm. a whole nother mission, a whole nother issue there. So um, the other thing is, if the if you find out that someone in your area has this bug, uh, don't freak out. Be calm. Um, and th- there's there's more to it than just someone having it and spreading it around. You know how hard it is to get. Um, uh-oh, we ran out of time on the Facebook <laughs> Live. According to this, 140 degrees is what kills bacteria. Oh, I didn't realize there was a time limit. It's still running. Oh, we'll have to start over. Pause. Pause. Use good. Okay, I just started recording again. So can we go through that again? Yeah, so what were you... Uh, Hot water. Bacterial hot water. Okay. The temperature to kill bacteria with hot water heaters is 140. Okay. According to my resources. Okay. So be, be careful. What is your resource? <clears throat> we need to cite that. Oh, I just said. What was it? Energy something. Probably energy.org. Or one of those guys. Because it's more about, people think about it more about electricity than and electrical use and saving money than they do about the danger of not washing your hands. Um, but we have a lot of things going on with this, so we have to be really careful. Uh, yes. The other thing to think of, I'm going to backstep because one thing I forgot to mention was uh, I, told, I was talking about social media, but I skipped a piece. It was waterheatertimer.org, sorry. Oh, waterheatertimer.org. Timer.org, okay. Um, so I'm going to back this up. One of the ways of dealing with this isolation, I talked about uh, sleep and food differences and things like that that can, can alter your health while you're doing this. Mm-hmm. Don't forget about exercise. Yeah. With the gyms closed and everything else, there are lots of things. And you mentioned bicycling a little yes. while ago. We also cycling, have a Wii Fit balance board. So we well, yeah, if you've got something like that so you can keep moving. But I would recommend going outside. Yes. If at all possible, just take a walk. Do anything like that. Get your what cardio. What is it they say? Blow the dust off of you? You need to get your cardio up <laughs> because that will help you deal with stress. Well, your it's blood... also good to get outside and get some cold on you to kill him. Well, it may not. I don't know that that's going to help, but it's the... The idea is that you need to get your heart rate up. You need to move around. You need to walk. You need to run. You need to do other stuff. Do something very active. Well, being um, out in nature is also good for your blood pressure. It, it will. It'll help you calm down. But just the, you need to move around. Um, there's If you can do yoga, that'll help you. If you can meditate, that'll help you. Anything to help you keep calm. And uh, avoid contact with others, but open air is always good for you. Mm-hmm. So try to do something to get your heart rate up. And and you mentioned cycling, and cycling is one of those things you don't need to have other people for. You, well, you, you don't can need... take the dog for a walk, or you know, just go to the park by yourself. There are a lot of things you can do outside. I don't know that alone. I would go to. I don't know. I go to the park unless you make sure you don't touch any surfaces. Just well, stay away from just stuff. Stay on the just path. walk around. You know, leave don't stuff rub alone. Rub up against the benches. Trash cans can be just a breeding ground for this stuff so be very careful about that but go outside move around a little bit now if you can't do that um the streaming services we talked about netflix and everything the streaming services have lots of free exercise programs do amazon especially amazon's got them videos. netflix has got them everybody's got them and there are even free channels for roku that have them on there mm-hmm. so find something you like a, a yoga thing or something anything to get your Get your heart rate up or or to calm it down in other ways, you know, to, to stay calm and sort of let go of some of the stress. Just to mention in this part, too, if you just joined us, if you have any questions, feel free to comment them. I'm watching the Facebook live stream. So yeah, we've got the stream up. If you have a up. comment or something, we can attest to that or, you know, just say hi. And we'll do, an, uh, as this thing progresses, we'll probably do another one of these. So now that you've seen it, you'll know kind of what it looks like. Um, but I think these are, uh, this kind of discussion is really important because we're not talking heads on some news show. No. Um, we have no political agenda. This is entirely for you to be, uh, to help you with, and it helps us too. We're, we're forced to stay ahead of this. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are every day, you know, we keep talking about the coronavirus, but this stuff carries over to preventing the flu. Yeah. I have found a checklist for household plan of action. Oh, let's have that. See what's on that. Sure. Fire away. Okay. Where is, where is it you're Preventative looking? Preventative actions. This is from cdc.gov. Prepare checklist household readiness. 
Get a household plan of action. Consider the members of your household at greatest risk, such as older people or people with chronic severe diseases, illnesses. Okay. Ask your neighbors what their plan is, as you said. Get a, you know, use your support systems. Contact any local organizations. I would say Council on Aging, things like that, for support and resources. That's what they're there for. Create an emergency contact list of friends and family and neighbors in case you need them. Choose a room in your house to be a sick room. You already said that. Wash your hands frequently. Preventative actions. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home if you're sick. And stay away from the people with the uh, immune suppression if you can. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue. Throw the tissue away. Clean and disinfect any ter- surfaces that have been touched. Prepare your child for school and child care. Prepare. Be prepared if your child's school or child care is temporarily dismissed for potential changes at your workplace. Prepare to work from home. We have a whole video on that if you would like to watch that. That is... That's at gldenterprises.net. It's on our YouTube channel as well. Yep. In case of an outbreak in your community, you would like to look for warning signs of COVID-19. That's difficulty breathing, persistent pain in your chest, new confusion or inability to wake up or rouse person, blue lips or face. Keep away from other people who are sick. Stay home if you are ill and you have a fever or cough. Those are the first, I would imagine those are the first two. Well, it said that fever is one of the most noticeable uh, pieces of this Mm -hmm. thing. You'll generally feel bad. And one lady described it as feeling like there were knives in all her muscles. Oh, that sounds horrible. So it sounds like the flu, like the really bad. I I remember having, I remember having what I think they called the Asian flu back in the seventies. I was in the fifth grade Okay. and I was down for more than a week. Is that like the it AD, was bad the bird flu? It wasn't like bird no. flu. I mean, it may be related. I don't know, I but don't it know. didn't. I I didn't really. Rem- I think I'm just mixing up Asian and aviary. It's a lot of it's a lot of <laughs> flu. Yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff. Asian and aviary are close words for my brain. But I had the. Uh, I remember that most of it was. It started with me throwing up on the school bus on the way home. Oh no! And then I was done for the week. I, I have such a fear of throwing up in public. It's like a weird like embarrassment. Well. Can you, uh, I don't know what this. I didn't see the thing about what this does to your stomach, but this is a respiratory virus, so it's probably not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably not something that you're going to have a lot of I stomach don't see issues a lot with. Of stomach stuff. It no, says this seems like stay at least six feet away from people if you can. Further. More than that. Everybody has been now. saying further that this stuff travels. It's airborne. It's easy enough to get it on somebody just in spittle and talking, and you just got to be really careful. This is actually an important point. It says take care of your emotional health. That's what we were just talking about. Take, keep in touch and contact with your household members and your other family members so that you don't lose you know, connection. And, and do we're it social as, creatures. Which is why, I su- this is why I suggest don't use the, the computer. Mm-hmm. Pick up the telephone. Talk to them directly. You will help each other calm down. Mm-hmm. This is... Anxiety from this thing is turning out to be as bad as the disease itself. Right. It's causing people to, to really freak out. Mm-hmm. We are under the gun here. We're worried about finances. We're worried about our business. I, I've had a lot of things canceled. Yes. I've had a lot of Everyone's organizations. Everyone's discouraging any public gathering. Any public all gathering. All of our network meetings are canceled. All that's canceled. We're going, different groups. We're going electronic in a couple yes. of weeks on all so these. So that's also a choice. If you have to work, consider a Zoom meeting or Skype meetings or FaceTime meetings. All of these things are free and they're available to you with limitations. But, uh, you know, I've done two two Facebook or, I'm sorry, Zoom meetings today. Mm-hmm. And one was a group meeting for it's one of our networks. It's super simple. It's you wouldn't very even easy. believe it. So, if, you know, if you want to contact your family, you can use those video resources. Use those video resources. Just because you're not in a business doesn't mean that you can't use those yeah, video, that's video free. conferencing. Now, I've also read that Zoom and the other companies are upping their game. Mm-hmm. They're getting more server space. They're getting more That was my concern. More what broadband. if those things crash? They're not ready for this. Uh-huh. And that's what it looks like. This says uh, make sure you have access to several weeks of your medications. And you said the pharmacy already called you. Pharmacy's already called me. Um, I have approximately two weeks of stuff for so dad. You keep two weeks. Anyway. I'm 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 usually two weeks out anyway because yeah. I as soon as it's available I get it and refill it because I don't want to be without if something happens. Well, most people on maintenance medications keep those. My parents get theirs through uh, one of the mail order prescriptions. They're usually about a month ahead. Right. And some medication and you have they won't because it takes him a week to mail. It to some you. of this medication they won't let you do that. Right. So it's like his Parkinson's med, which we're adjusting now. It's become you know that's part of the sleep issue, but um, those kind of things you, you got to stay on top of that stuff. If you are going to go out in public, don't touch anything more than you need to. <laughs> 
Driving gloves won't help you. No, no. Work gloves won't help you. I mean, they will. There's a Just barrier there hands for sure. But wash your public. hands. It's that sanitize simple. Sanitize your hands. Sanitize the shopping cart. Everything. Now, I'm going to put. I'm going to throw a monkey wrench into that. Uh-oh. Every piece of information I'm seeing from health professionals. I'm yeah, not going to quote them. Doesn't help. No, they say definitely you can use it, but nothing is better than washing your hands. Yeah. The water, the soap, the combination of those. You know, if you buy, if you've. If you buy this new soap I've got for you today, you buy this new soap, just add water, and you get suds absolutely yeah. free. You know, there's a really good point <laughs> as to if you buy this. And don't fall for people who are selling things on Facebook Marketplace at three times their value. Uh, yeah, soap usually. Soap and water's fine. You don't have to scour the world for Facebook hand has been really good about dumping those people. So be very careful oh, about good. this. There, there's are a, they dropping them off? Yeah, there's a lot of scams going on. Yeah. you got to report them, though, because they can't watch for everything. Mm-hmm. So if you see something like that, report it. Let Facebook take care of it. But I'm I'm looking at Facebook right now, so it's and we're broadcasting, so that's making me think of it. Mm-hmm. But it isn't just Facebook. Phone calls are starting. Yeah. The elderly are being targeted again as if they weren't already in the tax season. They're being targeted for other things. So watch out for that stuff if you're a caregiver. Um be you know, I, we're beating this in the ground, but be careful. Just be careful and please stay calm. Well, you know what? Just use your brain. Use reasonable precautions. Well, the problem Anything is that, that would be we're more getting so than you usually do. We're getting conflicted information. So I'm going to read you a few quotes. These are by uh, a couple of different doctors, but I think the ones I've got here are the same ones. Okay. Um, we asked him. There's an article on um, AdviceShineTax.com, okay. and it's an advice network, and and they were asking people, they asked experts how to cope with the coronavirus anxiety. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about this only in the in the aspect of a CVA coronavirus anxiety. Does it have a thing already? I, I don't know. I don't. Everything needs. Shortened. Don't bet on it. It's going to have an acronym. Everything needs shortened. It already has a logo Hashtag and CVA. and a, a theme song. You know, it's like when we a have a war, song? the first thing you got to do is logo I'm and a sorry, theme. Sorry, there's song. a theme song. I think there was. They, they play that. Who would want to volunteer? That's just. Let's do the theme dramatic song. Dramatic news song. Uh, it is a dramatic news song. So they, <laughs> they have all this stuff, but uh, they asked all these questions of these experts to try to get get some information. So they went to um, uh, an associate professor of medicine at Northwestern, and her name is Catherine Belling. Mm-hmm. And they asked her some of these, these questions. So they need, before you get conflicting information that's mm-hmm. out there, find some reputable organization. Um, and, and Dr. Belling says... People who are already predisposed to general anxiety, and she's including herself in that, need to find a single source of reliable information that's not falsely reassuring. That's why I recommended the CDC. Well, you know what I just found on the CDC, which is interesting? Under their frequently asked questions, it says, who could someone blame or avoid to to avoid COVID-19? Like, who's at fault? So now we're blaming people for biological viruses no they're talking about the political side of this yeah. that's why you got to be careful about that don't stuff. let look at the science stigma hurt people it, even the cvc says don't create more anger or fear towards ordinary people because the disease is the problem not some group of people so the other at this point your local health department is probably one of the best sources but i'm going to caution you on that don't don't take the public relations officer's information as black and white. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you understand that the, the experts are giving those things to get out because that's their job is to distribute that information. So be, be mindful of that. Um, but they're still the best source of information because they're going to know what's going on in your area. Well, I think it's interesting. Somebody's trying to find someone to blame. No one ever tries to figure out where the flu came from. Well, it's been around too long. Oh. And this is not a new thing. Coronavirus isn't new. And this also, strain coronaviruses are a class are, are a of class of, of virus. This is a strain. This the COVID nineteen is the thing. So, um, be careful uh, and remember what you can control here. You know what is it the the serenity prayer, something about change uh, the things I can change and con- the wisdom to know the difference, the difference between the things that you can and can't. Right. Change. So it's not realistic to hunker down and cut yourself off from everything because you just can't. Your your world's going to stop. The most thing, the most control we have. This is uh, again, Doctor Belling. The most control we have is basic, unspectacular hygiene mm-hmm. and being patient. And I think the patience is really where we're losing it. Um, continue a mindful practice. Mm-hmm. You know, you if you feel like your anxiety is creeping in, um, try not to make it your cue to you know 
go bananas. Yeah. Uh, do some mindful techniques until you get grounded. Um, well, and keep in mind, this is a person to person respiratory droplets. It's not, you know, rubbing up against someone at the grocery store. You're not going to be like, oh my God, I have it now. Not likely. No. Uh, it's possible. Unless but they're it's, covered it's, in uh, respiratory uh, droplets. They're sneezing on you or, ch- or coughing on you That's or something. That's a little then, different. Yeah. Um, this, uh, this is another, uh, resource. This, uh, Dr. Crystal Lewis, um, is quoted in here as well. Um, says you must take care of yourself first so that you can continue to take care of your loved ones. We say that all the time. Yes. So this is the, the airplane. This is the airplane safety mentality. If you don't look after yourself, you will not be here to take care of your family members. So Mm -hmm. please, Whatever you think is more important for them, it is more important for you. Um, set boundaries with your phone about looking at your phone. Um, remember to go to johnhartford.com or John dot a. John a. Yeah, it's got an a. John a. Hartford.org. Org. There's a lot of good resources. There's there. so many pieces in there. Um, get those moments of hope. Don't and don't forget your empathy. You know, remember that people. You don't know what other people are going through. I read something today that really kind of ticked me off. I'm looking at a story that was posted on Facebook by one of the news outlets, okay. and some idiot posted on there. Do any of you know someone who has this or even has tested positive for it? Isn't it funny that nobody knows anyone who does? And that's crap. Mm-hmm. Like. Okay. Well, I, if there's 30 people in Ohio that have it, I don't know. I'm not going to know all those people. I don't know all whatever million people. Their point was that this is a conspiracy of some kind that really? the government's doing <gasps> so that they can they can um, nationalize the government. Is this person I'm also sorry. a flat earther? Is it, well, I'm wondering <laughs> about that because it's yes, they have blown this out of whack. We get it, but mm-hmm. there's a reason for the blowing out of whack. I don't agree with all of them, and nobody should. That's why we have elections. Yes, but. This is the better safe than sorry mentality. And if it causes people a little bit of financial heartache, we'll have to deal with it. We'll make it work somehow. Everybody will be okay. And it is going to be very, very hard. And you're not by yourself. Right. This is. (laughs) Well, you know what I think would probably be a good way to wrap this up? Do you have something else? No, I'm good. That's that's pretty good. On Google today, do the five to help stop coronavirus. Hands. Wash hands often. Elbow. Cough into your elbow or into a tissue and throw it away, please. Yep. Face, don't touch your hands, face, mouth, nose, after touching other infected things. Feet, stay more than three feet. We're saying at least six feet apart. Well, it says six feet. I'm going to go longer than that. I'm going to say at least eight feet. And feel. If you feel sick, stay away from people, please. So hands, elbows, face, feet, and feel. Most of those are body parts. Oh, we're ringing. Our Facebook Live camera is now phone so we have to wait a second it's up. It <laughs> there we go the live videos so just keep those things in mind your hands cough don't cough from people cough into a tissue or your elbow don't touch your face nose mouth stay more than six feet away from people and if you feel sick stay away from other people please so I'm gonna I'm gonna end this. You said we needed something a little lighthearted in this, and I didn't feel. I said, could we have jokes? She said, said no. And I typically do that. I do some kind of joke at the beginning of our podcast. I didn't think it was right, but I'm gonna end this with something that's not quite a joke, but it's funny and ironic. Okay. This is the 42nd anniversary of the Douglas Adams radio broadcast of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And if you don't know anything about this, it's a satire. Mm -hmm. It's all about government and dumb things, and it's it's set in outer space. Right. And it's about this poor guy who... He's losing his house. He wakes up in the the morning. intergalactic highways. They're putting a highway through and uh, through his neighborhood. The entire planet. No, hang on. they're, They're putting a highway through his neighborhood, and he wakes up in the morning to bulldozers. And then he finds out his best friends from the, from another planet, and they're actually putting a highway through our star system. Oh, that's right. They're going to knock down the Earth, too. He gets rescued. But the, they give you, throughout the story, they give you these pieces from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, this reference book. Mm-hmm. And this is the this is how Earth got started. But the, this is a long, detailed thing. But <laughs> this will tell you what it is. You these are ta- so nerdy. These tales of impending doom allowed the Golga Frenchans to rid themselves of an entire useless third of their population. They sent aloft three arcs. The B arc would hold everyone else. That's the, arc the, A-R-K? The A-R-K. Okay. Such as hairdressers and telephone sanitizers. <laughs> they sent the B ship off first. But of course, the other two-thirds of the population stayed on the planet and lived full 
rich and happy lives. They were trying to rid themselves of the useless third of their population. Ouch. Now wait, until those people who stayed behind, thinking they were getting rid of all the people that didn't matter, they needed telephone hand sanitizer. Were all wiped out by a virulent disease contracted from a dirty telephone. Ah. Wipe your phones they, down, people. They didn't think you needed telephone sanitizer. Clean your phones. Yes. So here's the other piece that Douglas Adams said that I'm going to quote because I had the honor of meeting Douglas, and he, and he's such a good writer and such an ironic guy. But one thing I'm going to give you two words to live by during all of this. Don't panic. It's the most helpful or intelligible thing anybody ever said to me. It pops up on my phone every time it rings. That is his screensaver. You it is my screenshot. That. that is legit. It, it's my, it's my lock kidding. screen. And I need you guys, everybody out there, to be calm. Take care of your family member. Take care of your child. Take care of whoever it is you're taking care of. But first, take care of yourself. You're not going to be able to help anybody if you don't. Go That's buy right. all this stuff. Have a look at it. You know, All this information is out there contact send us an email if you want some information you can't find it we'll try to help you find Old it nerd fitness at gmail.com yep and we will uh, or post facebook a bunch of links send it to facebook if you want to do it that way um or if you've got questions send those on our facebook page we're happy to answer them there and if we we don't know the answers we will find them again we are not medical professionals we just find the information to help you to, to we're just sharing what we ride found. this out we will be back again within the next couple of weeks to do another one of these um, we may do a couple of these a week because this is an important thing. And if you are new to working at home, if that's something you're doing, go to our website, gldenterprises.net. There's resources there to help you with that. And it also talks a little bit about the virus. Mm -hmm. So get out there, be careful, be safe. Um, if we're going to, we're not going so to be able to, maybe not get up. And we're get not going to be there. able to get up, get up and stay, get home. up and stay home, <laughs> get up and get out there in your own bubble. Yeah. Stay in your get bubble. Outside. Go How outside. Take um, a walk. And hopefully we'll all weather this. It's all going to be okay. Try to hang in there. And uh, nobody's more worried than we are. So we're, we're all in it with you. And I, I know lots of people have been reaching out to me. Hey, is your dad okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Your family okay? Please share this out to people you know or caregivers. Or if you, you guys have questions, comment on the video, comment on the blogs, whatever you want. Yes. We, we want this to be interactive. Send this out. Um, and we appreciate it. So we're going to sign off for now, and hopefully we've had enough time on Facebook and everybody I'm will get say, to say stay healthy. Get up and stay healthy. Get up and stay healthy. Stay safe, and don't give in to the crazy. Relax. Stay calm. Again, in Douglas's don't words, panic. don't panic. We'll see you soon. Peace.